Hey, welcome to How To In A Few. Today we're going to take a look at how to prepare a microwave um, when you have a complete power failure. Uh, what I mean by that is that nothing is showing up on the microwave. The display where normally there's time or, and the light that normally comes on, nothing's coming on. And the first thing of course that you're going to want to do there is to go check your circuit breaker and make sure that it's not a circuit breaker issue and reset it and then see if the problem repeats. But if the circuit breaker is not tripped in your circuit breaker box then most likely what has happened is that you've blown a fuse. Now there's two types of fuses uh, typically in microwave one that's just a current, a 20 amp current fuse and the other one is like a high temperature circuit breaker or fuse um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at what's inside of this panel and see if we can't find the problem. Alright, we need to get behind this control panel and I can actually see the screw that's holding that in place but I can't get to it until I take off this top panel. So I'm going to check up here. There's a couple of screws on the microwave housing but I can see that right here in front I have two Phillips screws that are holding this vent in place. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those and see if, if I have better access. I want to drop these screws anywhere. Alright, so now I have the vent off. And we can kind of see inside here, this is all the, uh, the fan mechanisms to vent, uh, not just from the stove, but also from the microwave up. And it's much cleaner now than it typically is because it's already been cleaned, but yours may have a lot of built up oil residue and also some type of filter that can be removed that you can put a little soap, maybe soak it for overnight and then rinse it out and then replace it back where it goes. There we go. So now we can access the screw that holds the control panel on. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that and see if I can pull it away. It looks like the door is holding it. So let me change the camera angle real quick. Okay, so with the door open now it's a little bit easier to kind of tilt this out of the way. It does have a little rod that holds it in place and a couple of electrical connections, but if I kind of tilt it out of the way, you can see a fuse back in there in its holder. Let me go ahead and try to zoom in on that. So you can see what that looks like. So, Alright, so we're going to reach in there and remove that fuse. And I failed to mention earlier that the unit is unplugged. Above the microwave there is an electrical plug and it has been unplugged. You probably want to trip the breaker too just to be safe, but there's no current now and I can just pull this fuse out and then we'll go ahead and test it and see if that is in fact our problem. Alright, now I'm going to check the old fuse. I have my multimeter out and I've turned it to ohms. It's a little upside down horseshoe which tests uh, the resistance and it actually sends current through. Here is our old fuse and it stays reading zero which indicates that it's an open circuit, no continuity. And then when I take the new fuse, I'm getting 0 0.1, 0 0.1 ohms, so 0.2. So there is current flow, 0.3 now through it. So that is showing that current does flow through it. Alright, so now that we've verified that the fuse is bad, I'm going to go ahead and install one of the new fuses. It simply slides in and I'll kind of center it to make sure that both of the contacts are being made. And then one more time I'll zoom in just so that you can see the fuse back in its holder. Much brighter white appearance, newer fuse. And now I will reattach the control panel. Be very 
careful not to whoop, almost dropped it the exact thing I said to be careful about try real hard not to drop these screws into the inner workings of the microwave next I'll put the top vent back on Most of these parts are plastic, so you should just tighten them enough to retain them. Don't try to torque them down. Alright, back in place. Let's check to make sure our door shuts. Alright, now comes the real test. When we plug the unit back in, do we have a live microwave or not? So I plugged it in and it is giving me, it says enter hour and minutes. It's currently, let me check. It's like 440, almost 441. Imagine. Oh, press one for AM, two for PM. It's PM. Press clock to set and clock. Bam. All right, we should be good to go. Let's check real fast. Nothing in there. Let's run it for 30 seconds. All right, appears to be microwaving nothing. Table spinning properly. We don't want to run it empty for too long. Make sure that our light's working. Vent's working too, so we are back in business. All right, so there you have it. Another how-to in a few video. We went from having a broken microwave, a couple hundred dollars uh, to have to replace, and instead we fixed it with, I think they were about a dollar a piece. I ordered them from Amazon, and I think I got five in a pack for five dollars free shipping, something like that. So uh, for uh, <laughs> a couple of bucks, we're back in business. Gave us a reason to uh, clean the filters on the microwave too. There's also another filter underneath that if you haven't cleaned that in a while You probably want to take care of that even if you're not having microwave problems because eventually you will uh, Hopefully that helped you out if it did go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Maybe hit the subscribe button um, And if you really appreciate it, there's also now a donate or help out button Something like that where you can make small contributions, a dollar or what have you, uh, just uh, to kind of uh, help me out and keep YouTubers like me uh, making videos for people like you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.